designing for Robin Marie Smith and today I am going to make a circular shaped little mini art journal inspired by my love of pie charts and all things mixed media. So I'm going to be doing like a mixed media pie chart situation here for my cover. So what I have is a piece of watercolor paper that I have just doodled and sketched roll loose and free a circle. And then I've gathered some yummy little Robin Marie Smith products. I have her Urban Fringe cards. I have the Garden Muse stamp set, the Woodland Fairy stamp set, and let me open this up so you can see. That's the Woodland Fairies. this is the Garden Muse, and then the Natural Elements rubber stamp set. So I'm going to be playing with all those images. And then I have the sticker sheet from the Wait For Me collection, as well as the Mixed Media Artist Papers Volume 3, which is going to help me form the interior of the journal. So I am going to get going on this and play some music and also kind of explain as I go along and uh, enjoy. Thanks for watching. see I just sketched out my pie chart shape real loose and doodly then did some messy stamping with the stays on waterproof ink and put some of those cute stickers on and then I went over it with my palette knife and some white acrylic paint and then dried it with my heat tool and so that all was basically just to kind of set the stage for some mixed media fun here. And so now I've got my watercolors going and with that dried white acrylic paint, I'm gonna get some really interesting shapes and texture going here because it acts like a resist with the watercolor. Um, and when I say that, I mean that where the watercolor goes over the white acrylic paint, it does not absorb like it does on the paper. So you get just kind of a nice contrast there, and it is resisting that paint. So that's what that term means. And I'm just playing with color here, a very wet brush, just moving things around and, and really just getting color onto this. This is still kind of at the very beginning stages and just playing with really the entire rainbow. Um, I think that's a really fun way to work in a pie chart. And so that's what I'm doing, just playing with color and letting all of it move around in that water and kind of do its own thing over the resist of the white acrylic paint. Okay, so with that good and dry, now I can come back in with some more watercolor and sort of redefine the parts of this pie chart. So I just have a darker blue and I'm going in and doing a little bit of shading, kind of starting at the point on the interior of the circle and then just blending outwards and I'm also using some yellow and just letting those colors blend but basically I'm just kind of adding more contrast and some shading to really sort of flesh out the pieces of the pie.
Okay, so with that good and dry, you can see that I went back in with my pencil and did a little bit more sketching to reinforce the pie piece, you know, the pie pieces again. And um, then what you've been watching me do is sketch on some faces, very loose, very free, not going for a photorealistic thing by any means, but just getting kind of the basic features on there, the eyes, the nose, and the mouth, and then just a very sketchy kind of outline of the face. But I love including faces on my mixed media projects, so I wanted to have them on here as well. Okay, so with my faces on, now I'm cutting all the pieces. And you might be thinking, oh my goodness, um, but this is what's going to make it so fun. So I'm just going around freehand cutting all the pieces of the pie and also kind of doing a curved uh, edge there on the end. And once I get them all cut, I am going to head to my sewing machine and just using some black thread, just kind of stitch around them like you can see here. So I've got all my pieces and now I am doing another scribbly circle and this will serve as the foundation in which to re-adhere the pie pieces. Now I am not at all concerned about them going back on the way that they originally started. That's part of what makes this so fun. I am sort of paying attention to the orientation of my faces because I want them to kind of look um, you know, top to bottom, up and down, look the way they are. Now, it, you certainly could do them upside down, but I just kind of wanted them to be the way that they were originally. But all the other pieces, I'm not even really sure if that's where they started. I just kind of got everything organized, and now I'm just tacking them down on this um, the other piece of paper, which is a watercolor paper, um, which is also, I'm not sure if I mentioned, but what I did, all the mixed media work for the pie chart pieces that is a watercolor paper as well so and you can see that I left lots of the black thread hanging I think that's so super fun so I'm just getting them kind of squishied around the way that I want them making sure that they're all glued down properly with my tacky glue and then there you can see the back and I'm just really smoothing it on making sure that it's going to dry nicely Okay, so once that's good and dry, I am using some matte medium and I am just going to paint it all over the back of this because, you know, since this is a cover of a journal, I don't want it to look, you know, a little raggedy like this when I open it up. I want it to be, feel very secure and very much like a cover. So I have painted the matte medium on and then I have this craft like shopping bag and I'm just smoothing my pie chart down on there and then I'm weighting it down with an art journal so that that matte medium can really get glued down nicely. So with that all glued properly, now I need to kind of obviously cut out this, you know, craft bag thing. So I have a wet paintbrush and I'm going around the edge here because I want to tear this brown paper bag and so doing that with the wet paintbrush just kind of gives, um, makes it really easy to tear and then I have a basic guide of the circle. So you can see that I'm just pulling it out uh, with the brown paper bag glued to the back of it but having it torn like that gives some really fun edges. So just getting that all set the way I like it. I think that turned out super fun. It's going to make a great cover for this book. And so at this point, I'm going to go ahead and pull out the mixed media papers and just kind of think about how these are going to work for the interior of my book. I love these papers because it sort of gets you away from the fear of the blank page. So all of the pages on the inside of this book are going to have all this fun color already going on. And it's going to be a great starting point for any kind of collage or mixed media work that I want to do. Now, the papers are like an 8.5 by 11, maybe 8 by 10. I'm not exactly sure, but they are not, if I just took one piece of paper, it doesn't make a large enough circle, you know, to fill the circle of the cover, if that makes sense. So I'm sort of staggering them, which I think is going to be really fun. And it's going to give a nice layered look. So I've got them the way I like, and I'm just sort of securing that very quickly with a tiny attacher. 
which is a stapler, just so that I can get them, you know, in set where I like them staggered. So you can see how I've just layered them up. And then I do a little circle doodle, and now I'm cutting them into the circular shape. So if I hadn't have stapled those, it just would have been really hard to cut that. And then I did um, left the edge on the left straight, which is fine because that's going to be where I bind it onto the cover. So I have my little packet of pages here and then of course my front cover. And now I need to sort out what's going on with the back cover. So I have another piece of watercolor paper and I am just using the contents of the book that I have so far as a rough guide to sketch out and then cut a circle. And then I'll just, you know, I can see how it works and then cut it down further as needed. And so once I have the back the right size, I'm just going to head to my sewing machine to stitch straight down the left side of the journal to just hold it all together. Okay, so you saw there that I stitched down the left and I flipped through the book and kind of creased down the pages. And I just have my stapler sitting there on a spot that needed to be glued down. And now I'm using my pencil to just go back and do a little bit more shading to kind of make those faces pop out just a tidge. And then just kind of doing some scribbles around the face and just really getting that contrast. Doing the same with the other face at the top. And contrast is key. That's what's going to make your projects pop. And so now I'm going to take my watercolor here and just do a little bit more on the cover just to really jazz it up. Once again, adding more contrast, more color, and just doing some shading in these uh, pie chart pieces and just really helping a certain elements pop out to the forefront. And you'll notice that I'm using a lot of blues and greens with a little bit of yellow, and that's just a palette I really enjoy. Um, but it's fun to play with all kinds of different colors, especially when doing a pie chart like this.
Okay, so that is good and dry. You can see that I also stitched some ribbons to the left side binding there. Just some a little fabric scrap, a couple ribbons I had in my stash, and I love what that adds. And now I am using my um, black pen and pencils just to add some more contrast, go around the facial features, do some scribbly doodles, and then just going back into some watercolor and really making sure that I have this covered the way that I want it. So while that watercolor dries, I can go ahead and use my Zots. Those are like a little glue dot and use them to adhere some buttons just around those ribbons. I think that's really fun. And because it's on the edge where the binding is, it won't give me too much trouble when I'm working on the inside of my journal. I won't have a big bump or anything. And I love these dots because I don't have to deal with dry time. And so with those on there, I'm just kind of going in with my fingers and adding some texture by sort of peeling up the edges of some of the pie pieces. And I just love the dimension that that gives. Really, really fun. And so to finish off everything here, um, I think that it's going to be really fun to decorate the inside just a little bit. Obviously, I'm not going to be working on specific spreads or anything, but just really kind of um, get some things going. So before I do that, I'm just going to add a little bit more of the stickers here. I want some to kind of push towards the front. Um, the other ones got kind of layered over with a lot of paint. And so I want those fun um, graphic elements to really kind of pop forward and it's just a nice little touch on the cover. Okay, so now looking inside, I'm going to grab some file tabs, some art pop cards, and um, some shipping tags, and my stapler. And just very quickly, I'm taking advantage of the way that these papers are in this book kind of staggered and really highlighting that using some of the file tabs from Robin Marie and my shipping tags. And then, of course, in a minute, we'll get to the art pop cards. But this is just going to be a really fun foundation for working in this journal later doing some spreads. And I'm tacking it on quickly with my stapler just because I don't want to deal with, you know, going through dry time on each one of these spreads. And so this is just a really quick way to do it. And then you can see there that I took a fabric scrap and just kind of accentuated the shipping tag, the little um, kind of cord, the yellow cord there on the other one. And the key to this is to not overthink it. I'm just I'm just going with it, just sticking them in there, stapling them down. I'm not obsessing about each little piece, and that keeps it fun and free, and um, I think this is just going to be a joy to work in later. So I love that Art Pops card with the lines on it. Um, I think that'll be really fun. And then here, I'm creating a little interactive um, element here, the back of this. Art Pops card is white, so I can use it to journal on, to do um, another picture, some collage work, and so I just glued the edge, and then I'm just sort of reinforcing it there with some washi tape. And I've got that same washi tape here, and just kind of you know, spreading it around just for some nice visual continuity, and it also helps to sort of reinforce the areas where I have stapled or glued.
So with the inside all set, I went ahead and just did a little bit with my Stabilo on the front cover just for some more contrast. And then going in with some white acrylic paint to just really highlight those stamped areas from way back in the foundation. I just wanted those to pop a little bit. And then I'm going to add just a little bit of gl uh, glitter and some uh, sequins. And then that's going to call the journal done. This was so much fun. I've not done any art journal spreads in a circular format. So I am excited to work on the inside of this book. And I hope this has inspired you to try something new today and maybe play with some pie chart shapes. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.